electric. Hi everyone, welcome back to the EV Puzzle. Today I'm going to show you the unboxing of this, uh, my new inverter from Solus, which I'm going to use to connect my extra six solar panels that I have installed in the garden, and I obviously need to connect them to the house supply. So to do that, I'm going to use this Solus solar inverter. It is a Solus S6 GR1P 3.6K. So it's a 3.6 kilowatt uh, S6 model grid tied AC connected solar inverter. So why have I gone for this? So before I open the box and show you what's inside, let's explain why I've chose this. Uh, firstly, why AC and not DC? Well, I've got other AC uh, inverters and all of my monitoring is monitoring with CT clamps using um, AC connected inverters. So this is an easy installation. So there's less complication to it. My installer is going to find it easy. It's consistent with what we've got here. The monitoring will be consistent. So basically it's an easy decision to go for. It's a nice, simple solution. The monitoring platform from Solus, I like. It's consistent, it gets updates, it's reliable, it's very rarely down. So it's looking like Solus as a hardware manufacturer and a provider of the monitoring platform is here to stay. I'll tell you about the spec of this inverter in a moment, but the big decision really is which company to go for, which manufacturer to go for. And that's equally about the quality of the hardware and the features of the hardware, but it's also about the software platform and the company, because it doesn't matter how good the software platform is if the company is not going to be around for 10 20 years then that's no good to you it doesn't matter how reliable the hardware is if you have a small issue with it you're going to want support afterwards so the company is important now solace have, have a great reputation i've been using their products for four or five years already and have had no issues whatsoever the only issue i had with the monitoring platform was an issue when they migrate from one platform to the other and I received excellent support and got what I wanted and they helped me with the migration of the data. So for me, the experience that I've had with Solus is a quality um, set of services and a quality set of hardware. So it's an easy decision to go with Solus again. But I'll confirm this video is being sponsored by Solus. They have provided this inverter for free, which is more coincidental because I was going to have the Solus anyway. So it's, I'm not installing this just because Solus have provided the inverter. I was going to go for it anyway. It's a good combination of Solus sponsoring this video and my channel because I like Solus products. Anyway, let's get into opening up the box and see what we've got inside. It's like a mounting bracket of some description. Installation guide. Wow, the size of this installation guide really sums up uh, one of the simplicities about this device. Uh, it looks like it's going to be easy to physically install and software installation looks very easy as well. So keep hold of that. So let's show you those. See if we can get a nice close up on camera. There we go. So two of those for the solar cables. And then some more small I hope you can see that. I can't see with the shadows. We're actually going to show that up or not. I'll take separate pictures of these in case this doesn't show up. But uh, yeah, all the uh, connectors you need. Obviously not the wires for the solar cables and not for the power connections. They have to be provided separately. Oh, and a couple of screws. Keep all those separate. And there we go. So there's the S6 uh, series inverter, 3.6 kilowatts. Oops. 
It's not particularly heavy. I'm just making sure I don't cut myself on the edges of it. But loads of fins on the back here, ready for the uh, heat dissipation. So I like that. Same here, not sure what this is all about. The very simple connection here onto that bracket. And then very clearly labeled what all the connections are. So we've got a grid AC connection, DRM, communications port, DC switch, the uh, DC1 and DC2. This is a dual MPPT inverter, so I can have two strings of solar panels rather than one. 14 amps, I think, on each string. The reason why I've gone for two with only six panels is it'll help with optimization, so I can split them into two rows of three, or I might extend those six panels. I really like where they are in the garden, so there's a chance I'll extend it. So I could put all six on one array and have the extension onto the second array. So this is future-proofing it as well. And then uh, the meter. So this will be this will be the connection for grid maintenance. One of the features of this inverter is that it can monitor the grid and. If I put a setting in there for the amount I want to be able to export as a limit, then it will manage that limit. If it sees more export than that, it ramps the inverter down. So at the moment, I've got uh, 8.3 kilowatts of DNO approved solar export. So I can export 8.3. That's over a kilowatt more than um, I can actually physically generate at the moment. So that's good. If they don't give me any more export ability, which we are applying for it, but if they don't give me any more, we can set this to 8.3. And then if it exports any more than that, for any reason on any particular really sunny day, it can ramp the inverter down. So I can push a maximum of 8.3. But if I get approval for more, then I can put that setting on here and we'll be able to export more and generate more, of course. So yeah, very useful system. Weight wise, ah. I'll put the actual uh, weight on the screen, but it doesn't feel too bad at all. Uh, it's going to fit on my wall, just up there somewhere. That's where it's actually gonna go. Uh, location wise, it's close to the um, power supply for powering it and the separate consumer unit, which the AC output will connect to, which will give me a single point of monitoring so I can see all of the solar panel power that's being generated in one place. <clears throat> yeah, so specification wise, max input voltage, 600 volts. Um, MPPT voltage range is from 90 volts to 520. Uh, input current DC is two times 14 amp. As I said, I got that right. Uh, what else have we got? Um, absolute maximum DC is two times 22 amp. So that's looking like I can have 14 amp of power coming in, but I could have 22 amps of theoretical connected solar panels on each one. A huge amount of solar. Um, I've probably um, overspecced this slightly, but uh, sometimes you have to do that to get the right specification of inverter. Maximum AC output active power, 4 kilowatts, 4,000 watts. Max output apparent power, 4,000 VA. What have we got? Uh, operating temperature. This one's a really interesting one. From minus 25 to plus 60 ambient. So this will work in an environment of minus 25 or plus 60 degrees C. Uh, very, very impressive. And it's one of the reasons why I like Solace products. The engineering and the technical side of it, um, they're really robust. They're heavily tested in the cold and hot environments. This garage environment is not going to be anywhere near as hot as some of the installations. So I'm going to expect reliability of this device. So one of the other reasons for choosing this inverter, apart from the specification of the inverter and the manufacturer and the monitoring platform that I really like, other solar inverters that I've tested don't perform as well as Solus inverters in low light conditions, in the winter basically. So on a day when there's very little solar, you want to generate as much as you possibly can from the available light that's there. Some inverters don't even power up with that amount of low voltage in the winter. Whereas Solus do, um, they are the best that I've experienced in the uh, testing that I've done. And I've tested one, two, three, four different types of uh, inverter at the moment, and they do perform the best in the low light conditions. 
emissions. So yeah, I'm very happy with Solus from a performance point of view, from a hardware engineering point of view, and the software point of view. So of course for me it's a no-brainer to install Solus alongside my two other Solus inverters. Obviously we've got the fun bit to come next, connecting the inverter up to the panels. That should actually be this afternoon, this evening, and tomorrow afternoon, evening. Hopefully it'll be done this week. And then I can see what generation we're getting. And that, that's the fun bit, isn't it? Once you've chosen the hardware, that's the hard bit, I suppose. Once it's installed, you're hopefully gonna forget about it. And that's why that decision is quite important to get it right first, because you don't want to have to redo it. You don't wanna be swapping and changing these things. So getting this decision right up front is quite important. Then all of the fun generating the solar comes afterwards. Thanks for watching. Uh, keep following the channel to see how we get on with this inverter. I'll update you on a monthly basis as I normally do about the other inverters and the total configuration here. But uh, it's gonna be really interesting to see how this one compares to the other inverters that we've got already. Thanks a lot. See you again soon for more videos. Bye for now.